I like the look of this. Check out the forecast. Storms. Yeah, that doesn't look very stormy to me. Yeah, this is stormy weather, isn't it? I mean, the weather forecast says we have storms right now. So this must be stormy weather. This must be what stormy weather is. Okay. Is it working? Yes, it is working. And welcome to another video. Oh, um, um, I don't know how to say the rest of that sentence in that way. Well, while some selfish twat bangs outside, been hammering all day long, I think it's about time for an update. So, as some of you know, I built this computer, installed Linux on it, and almost nothing worked. And I swear, this is like the 60th attempt at doing this video. So, first off was this second hard drive, that I very precariously put in there, came out of my Windows 10 computer. I thought I could just whack it in the Linux computer, and it would work, which it kind of did, but kind of also didn't. Because I could read the files off that drive perfectly fine, but if I tried to write anything onto that drive, it was like, Nuh-uh, this drive's read-only, I'm not gonna let you do that. The other problem was the microphone wouldn't work, and Audacity wouldn't load. And those three things alone got me so mad at Linux being such an apparently retarded and useless OS, that I made a note to myself saying, don't ever install Linux, but look what I'm using now. Linux. Well, it turns out, thanks to your comments, that Linux apparently doesn't play well with NTFS formatted drives, and I didn't know that. So I put that drive back in my Windows 10 computer, copied all the files that I wanted to save onto a spare drive. Oh, goes the hard drive out of Mum's laptop, don't tell her. Don't worry, I put it back when I was done. Then put this hard drive back in the Linux computer, formatted it to ext4, and bingo! I could put new files on there, so I put all the files back on there, and as Dave Jones on the EEV blog would say, we got a winner winner chicken dinner! I don't know if he still says that, I haven't watched that channel in a long time. So the next problem I had to fix was with this microphone. So I plugged it in, and although it showed up in the device list, as you can see here, it didn't matter if I screamed into this microphone so loud that you could practically hear me on Pluto, nothing. Thing. I didn't hear anything, but as you can see now it's working. When I talk into it, you can see the input level meter going. And I'll say another thing, this microphone works a lot better on Linux than it does on Windows, because I can have this louder than 100%, which is something I couldn't do in Windows. I had to fix that in post. So yeah, I did a little bit of troubleshooting, and it turns out this thing is very picky about which USB I plug the microphone into. If I plug it into this USB, or this USB, it works fine. But if I plug it into any other USB, it's like, I ain't having it. And I'm like, where's my ammo? Also, I've got to be very careful about what else I plug into there. Like my video capture device, for instance. If I plug that in right next to the microphone, the microphone will stop working again. Also, other things plugged in right beside the microphone can also stop it working. But plugged in here, it's all good. So yeah, that got the microphone working. And... It also fixed Audacity. Before none of the versions would work, the system package wouldn't work, the flatback version wouldn't work, the snap version wouldn't work, even the app image that I downloaded from Audacity's website wouldn't work. Now they all work. So that now works. I can record from the microphone, as you're seeing right now. I'm not gonna save a copy of this file. I'm just showing this to demonstrate it. So after I installed Linux on this computer and fixed all the problems I had with it, I swear to God, I've been using Linux more than I've been using Windows. So there's a lot of things I like about Linux, or more specifically Linux Mint, like um, this picture viewer, which I think is called, uh, what's it called now? Image view or something. I know these pictures are mostly screenshots, but that's what I do. I'm just looking for a good one to zoom up on here. Ah, this looks like a good one. So I'm going to zoom up on the eye on this core here. It zooms up nice and smoothly, it nicely interpolates the pixels. Now let's see what Windows Photo Viewer makes of that very same picture. Uh. Yep, stepped and pixelated. Uh. Another thing I like on Linux Mint is this video player called Celluloid. Celluloid, uh, 
but it's a really good video player which plays just about anything. Man, why do I sound so angry and trying to be enthusiastic? Maybe I should talk in a dramatic, drama, theatrical kind of voice. No, I think that's overdoing it. But yeah, this one looks like a good video. Let's have a look. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. And check this out. Cool. I can go forwards frame by frame. <laughs> Shut up, me. I can go backwards frame by frame. I don't know any other video player that does that. So now I'm going to talk about a couple of things that Linux does that Windows doesn't, which I wish Windows still did but doesn't, if that makes any sense. So one thing I can do on Linux here, so one, so one thing I can do on, so one thing I can do here on Linux, so one thing I can do here on Linux, I don't know why that was such a hard sentence to say, is I can have different desktop environments, which I've installed. So let's say if I ever get, so let's say if I, so let's say if I ever get rid of, so let's say if I ever, so let's say if I ever get bored of cinnamon, and who can get bored of cinnamon? I mean, it's a great desktop. I've also got GNOME. I think it's pronounced GNOME. Might just be GNOME, I don't know. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't really like this desktop environment. It's kind of hard to navigate. The lack of any kind of start menu and icons in the corner of the window so you can close it and maximize it and whatnot not being there, that kind of makes it hard to use. I know some people love GNOME, and if you do, that's fine. It's just not for me. It just sort of kind of works kind of against me. Now, GNOME Classic, this is a bit more like it. Got a sort of start menu here with these apps and places. It's still not really my top pick, though. Now we're just waiting for my mate to load up. Come on, mate. Come on, mate. You can do it. Come on. Come on, mate. Come on. Five hours later. Right, so here we are in the mate desktop. Actually, I think it's pronounced mate, but I'm just going to call it mate. In some ways, it looks like XFCE. And in other ways, it looks like cinnamon. You know what? It's as if... XFCE and Cinnamon got together and had a baby. A uh, pretty nice looking baby too. Well, I don't want to bore you with too many desktops, but um, we're just going to briefly have a look at the other two. So, here's one of my favourites, KDE. And this one's definitely a keeper. I really like this one. It just looks so damn good. And last but not least, XFCE. And no, I don't know what that stands for. And I'm too lazy to look it up. So yeah, this is kind of alright, but um, it's kind of basic, kind of meh, but I'll give it this. It does load up nice and quick, like two seconds as opposed to maybe eight seconds that the other desktops take to load. And here's another thing you don't get on Windows, themes. Well, you, technically you do still get themes on Windows, but they're not what I would call themes. So I can change my mouse pointers, what my applications look like, what my icons look like, what my desktop looks like, and if that's not enough, I can get more. And this is just for the cinnamon desktop. All right, I've got to take a drink. In comparison, this is what you get on Windows. Just one desktop and almost no customization features. As a matter of fact, if you don't activate it, you don't get any customization features. And the only reason why I haven't activated this is because I just simply can't be asked. Linux just does this so much better. Because like I said, I'm using Linux more than Windows now. Now I've worked out all the infuriating problems that I had with it. So where I'm gonna go with this, this might give you a heart attack, but I'm gonna remove Linux off this computer and install Windows XP. I've even got a Windows product key right here, which I'm not gonna show you for obvious reasons. Anyway, I'll just give you a few seconds to recover from your heart attacks. So what I was going to do, my plan was, I was going to use this as my daily driver for web browsing and music making and video editing and all that. But it's just too slow. It takes like two minutes to boot up, applications take forever to load, videos take forever to render, and capturing my screen takes like 34% of the CPU. And that's simply because this old AMD graphics card doesn't have hardware encoding. No hardware encoding. Only software. Yeah, I know. A 13-year-old GPU doesn't have hardware encoding. Who knew? So when I try to do something intensive on this, it's like, I cannot do it, Captain. I'm giving her all she's got. I don't have the power. Or something like that. 
In fact, I specifically chose this because it's AMD. So what I'm going to do with this computer is I'm going to make this into a retro Windows XP gaming machine because there are some Windows games that I cannot play on Linux and there are some Windows games that I cannot even play on Windows, mainly older games. I know they run perfectly on Windows XP because I've tested them. I mean, yes, yeah, Steam and their Proton thing is really good. I haven't found a single game in my Steam library that doesn't at least run. And I can get a lot of games running in Wine and even make shortcuts to them. But yeah, for some games, I'm just going to need Windows XP, which is where this comes in. That way I can still have my Simpsons Hit and Run and my Monster Truck Madness 2 and all that good stuff. Also, this is going to be offline. So I might even install Flash on there and do all my animations on it without them spying on me. Well, my big computer is going to have Linux Mint installed on it, so yeah, you can recover from your heart attacks now. Linux isn't going anywhere, it's just going on to another computer, which I'm going to dual boot with Windows 11. Yeah, not Windows 10, Windows 11. Oh man, this thing's going to be awesome. But anyway, that's all going to be in another video, because I'm sure this video right now is like 10,000 million hours long, so... Until next time, goodbye, and I've got a lot of editing to do now on Linux.